Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rico Richardson. And in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to create an ACR in Darktable and how to process it. So let's go. Right, so here we have the light table menu of dark table and there's something we need to do before we get a DNG ACR file, which is we need to take a couple of photos from the same scene and then stitch them together as an ACR. So it's very, very important that you take around five to seven photos with different stops of exposure. So make sure you've got a couple of one underexposed so that the highlights are nice and clean and then get a couple of regular exposures and then get some overexposed ones so that the shadows are really, really visible. And then we're going to stitch them together. So for that, you're going to select all of them. So click one, click the last one and then go to selected images and then hit create HCR. And then Darktable will automatically create a DNG HCR file. So right now we're going to click that one, go to Darkroom, and this is the final result. So let's show you guys what we started with. So I'm going to take a snapshot. So right now on the left side is what we're going to start with. So if I move this to the left, you see that this is the end result. And the fun thing about this, let me change this one, is that you can see how much of the details are being preserved and how much you can bring back from the shadows. So that looks absolutely amazing. So let's start with this photo. So I'm going to click down the history one and I've made a duplicate because that's easier for me to work with and that way all my previous settings are being saved. I'm going to delete the snapshot and let's go to the history and the orientation is one. Maybe you will have a base curve over here. Just go to the orientation step, hit compress history stack and all should be well. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to change the exposure because it's very overexposed. I've put all the modules in my favorites. If you don't have them over here, most likely you can go to more modules and then find the modules in the list down below. Or what you can do is you can use this menu bar and you can search for them over there or you can use the search module and then fill something like contrast and everything that has contrast in the name will show up right so let's start first things first exposure let's activate that one because this is very underexposed so i'm just going to bring up the exposure quite a bit quite a lot actually and that reveals a lot more detail of this image and then the second thing that I want to do is I want to work on the sky because this was shot during sunset. So I want to give this a magenta type look. But for that, I'm going to use the graduated density one. And you guys have never seen me use this before, I think. So uh, you just get this tool and everything that is above this will be affected. And you can change the density. See? So uh, that darkens everything or it, it brightens uh, stuff up. But for this, what I want to do is I just want to make sure that it's around 0 0.4. And I'm going to change the hue because the hue will change the color of the sky. Let me overdo it. So here we have a lot. So the bottom side isn't being affected as much as the top side. Uh, this is way too much. So I'm just going to put this in half to give it a magenta type glow. I'm not going to rotate anything, but I am going to increase the hardness. And increasing the hardness is basically the feathering of this module. So I'm going to keep this at around 50 as well. I think that will look the best. Let me show you guys before and after. So here's a before, here's an after. Now we've got a nice magenta glow in the sky. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring this image to life. And for that, we're going to use the tone equalizer one. Go to activate it and I'm going to work with the different areas. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to hover my mouse around the areas that I want to brighten up. And I'm just going to move the mouse wheel button away from me so that it gets brightened up a little bit. And I'm going to darken the sky by just one stop and this message is sponsored by me i've got a second channel called gear island links in the description down below please click that card over there to check it out let's continue with the video if for whatever reason this is too much you can also change this manually a little bit so it will change the different areas accordingly 
I think I'm going to place them all around the 0 0.7 something range because that evens everything out and it prevents me from getting some halo in this image. And now I'm going to use the contrast equalizer one and the contrast equalizer one is a great tool to add some clarity to your image. So those of you that work with Lightroom are used to the clarity one, but here we have a preset which is called the clarity one. And I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to screen because that will brighten up the image quite a bit. And I really, really like how this is starting to look without the sky being overly blown out or overly exposed or whatever you want to call it. And the same goes for the reflection in the water. So everything is still very, very even out. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the color balance, which is kind of my most favorite module up to date together with the color zones, because I like to add contrast with it and even change some of the saturation. First things first hit this little color picker that will decide the area. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of contrast into this image to bring it more to life. And together with that, I still think that it looks a little bit dull and I want to change the saturation for that. So that will bring the image to life. The yellows are way more vibrant right now and so is the magenta. And this definitely starts to look as an image that was taken during sunset. And even though this image already is starting to look amazing, there's a couple of things I want to change. And the first thing is the tone curve one going to activate it and here's the thing if you change this area the shadows will be affected and if you change this area the midtones will be affected and if you change this area the highlights will be affected excuse me so for this image i want the highlights to stay a little bit intact but i'm going to drop them as well i'm going to bring back the midtones a little bit because that's what i want the image to be focused around i'm going to drop the shadows a little bit as well just to give it a little bit more contrast and a little bit more dark look because that's kind of the time that i shot this image so i want it to look as natural as possible and the great thing about this agr is that there is so much information left in this image that you can actually push it to its limits so let's add some lens correction to this image so i'm going to activate it and the image is nice and even out and now I want to denoise it. I didn't put that in my favorites, but hey, nobody's perfect. I'm going to denoise it, but that does make the image a little bit soft. So I'm going to sharpen it back again. And I'm going to change the radius in the amount because usually I keep it, but I'm going to change this to 2.5. And I'm going to change the amount to one. And let's show you guys before and after. So here's a before, it's very, very soft. And now it's a little bit more sharp. It's got more detail. And if we zoom back out again, it looks absolutely amazing. And that's it. That's how you can create and edit an HDR image in Darktable 3.0. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of me, please click uh, that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking uh, that button over there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!